Hey, what's up guys, Mendel here. Hope you're all doing awesome and wonderful. So in this video, I'm gonna show you some basics of drum bus compression. So as always, let's dig right in, here we go. All right, so here we are in Cubase. This is a band that mixed and mastered this year. Uh, the band's called Futility. Uh, the song is called All The Same. It's gonna be released somewhere in the next year, if I'm correct. And they were kind enough that I was allowed to use this song for this video, because I think it's a very cool song and a very cool song to demonstrate some drum bus compression. Now let's first go to some routing stuff. So I have my kick and snare go into a kick and snare bus. And the snare and snare sample are going into snare bus, which is going to the kick and snare bus. Room sample is going straight to the drum bus over here, drums group. And basically all the shells, so kick and snare go to shells and the toms go to shells. Now, some years ago, I mainly did bus compression just on the drums bus. But with my mixes, I didn't like how the cymbals also got more squashed. So I noticed my mixes were like way cleaner if I would just do compression on the shells bus. So again, the shells bus is basically kick, snare, and the toms. But let's first listen to some music. So this is some good uh, death metal, so beware. Here we go. Lastly, let's go to the bomb blast part. All right, some good modern death metal, if you ask me. Now, there are a couple of things you can do, and for me, every mix, I probably do something different. The thing I do most often is this. So I have my shells here. And then I do a tiny bit of bus compression on that shells bus. So the, uh, the vintage compressor is pretty snappy. And with snappy, I mean like the transient attack, which I really like. Some people like to use an early attack. For me, it's attack on 30, release as fast as possible, ratio four to one. So I'll play it and you can see it's, I think it's around four decibels maximum gain reduction, but it like it compresses everything nicely together. And especially during this part, you can hear like it nicely compresses the snare as well. I love that. So in context, let's do the slam part just for comparison. Without. It definitely makes that snare poke easily through those guitars. I love that snappy. And I know later on in mastering, uh, the transient perhaps is gonna be a tiny bit lost, so it's good to have tiny bit of snap, more snap in there. So that's one way to do it. Um, what you could also do is use parallel. Now there are two cool things you can do. Either parallel compression like this, and then like the, the compressor's pretty slamming. So around five or six, you could do even more. But I'm gonna blend that in. And since I'm sending the, uh, the shells bus to the parallel compressor I, and I wanna keep my levels in check, I need, of course, to keep the level of the shells a bit down as I'm applying the parallel compression. I 
again, there's way more pop in there. And if you want, the cool thing about this is because I do know that the, the Vitas compressor has a parallel mix knob. So you could say um, you put it on the shales bus and use that button there. But since I'm doing this on a separate channel, you could also apply some EQ on there if you want. Perhaps let's say you want some more of those lows in there and then blend that in. You can blend that in parallel. So that's another way to do it. Now, a very cool thing you could do besides that is over here I have Paracom filter. So what I did there is I filtered off everything below, what, 1,000 or 500 hertz? Yeah, 500 hertz. And what it basically does is a couple of things. First, because I filtered off all of that in the pre-section, that means the compressor won't get that's much ducked or slammed by the low end information like the kick drum. So you can compress more the snare and the higher toms a bit more, which is very cool. Now, the side effect of that, and it could be a positive or a negative depending on your mix, but because this is a side, um, a parallel channel and I filled it off everything low, it changes the EQ curve. So when I blend this in, it would almost sound like uh, basically there's also a high shelf added to the bus comp. So let me show you. So I have filtered off everything below 500 hertz, a lot of compression, and I just had this here so I could put the character on a, on 100. And listen what happens. So to me, it sounds it adds some presence and a lot of compression in there. Now over here, I'm really slamming it. And perhaps I could do even more. Now just that tiny bit that could be enough for this mix. Let's take a listen. So it's what on minus 20, 22. Now what I could also do is filter off a bit less. So let's say filter off everything around 150. And now let's take a listen what it does. Cool, I like how that sounds. Now, if I would do some drum bus compression, it would be just a tiny bit. And to be honest, I'd rather do like a brick wall limiting, just those tiny peaks. All right, and there you go. There are some basics for some drum bus uh, compression. So again, what I personally like to do is I like to compress the shells and basically like the cymbals have their own compression. And if I would do some compression on a drum bus, it would mainly be a tiny bit of limiting or just a tiny bit of compression. But for me, I think 
my mixes at least sound better when I only compress the shells. Might work for you. Experiment, have fun with it. I hope you learned something today. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And until then, see you next time. Cheers.